This podcast is produced by Visionary Studios. Hi, everyone. I'm Mitchell Rail. And I'm Wade Clausen. And welcome back to Let's Unpack That. Today, I'm so excited. We are joined by Colin Elliott. Colin, welcome to the pod. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. great. I feel like we've been trying to have you on here for like <laughs> nine months. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> but I'm so while. excited to have you here. Thank you for, for, for coming up. Colin, for those who maybe don't know who you are, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Give us a little bit of background on you. So I'm from super small town, Iowa, a uh, small conservative town called Algona. There's like 4,000 people that live there. Grew up there, went to high school, graduated, and then I went to UNI, which is just another university in Iowa, and then moved to Chicago. Okay, and what did you go to school for? I was undecided for a few years, Okay. and then I went for real estate and finance. Okay, and what do you do now? Um, not that. <laughs> Neither of those things. The exact opposite. I work in healthcare administration. Wow. Okay. So I deal with people's health insurance. Wow, look at you go. One thing that people may know about you is that you love Adele. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were infamously um, at the Grammys and really had that moment, that it boy moment. Mm. I mean, you, you were this close to announcing... Adele being a Grammy winner on no, stage. I'm just close to fighting a grandma. <laughs> no ordinary styles, yeah. But we'll, we'll get into those a little bit later here, but let's start here. When did you first realize that you loved Adele? How did that start for you? I was pretty young. I mean, it would have been, I could find the actual date because it was when she was on Saturday Night Live okay. back in the day. She was a guest on Saturday Night Live and it was when Sarah Palin was... The what a other combo. guests, I know. <laughs> and Adele was like unknown at the time. And so ha- being on Sarah Palin's episode, like a lot of people tuned in, obviously, including my family. I didn't really know. I, how old would I have been? Like 11 maybe or 12. Okay. So I wasn't really paying attention to like music much or maybe I was starting to get into it. Um, but then we watched that and I just remember my family was like enamored by hers. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, hmm. <laughs> look into this girl. And she was super underground. You know, and you really super, you, you discovered her. Yeah, right? I was I knew Adele before anyone else. Oh um, <laughs> no, that's like where it started. And then I just looked into her. Her album, her first album, was out at that point. So I just love it. So you obsessed. were 11 years old. Tell us a little bit yeah. before we before we get more into the you and Adele timeline. Right. What was it like for you growing up in Iowa? Um, Iowa was okay. <laughs> it was pretty boring. I mean. It was decent. Actually, I, I, I don't want to say it was too bad. I feel like people may think growing up in a super small town, especially being gay, is rough. And it wasn't great, but it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was pretty closed in. Like, you're in your bubble. I didn't know there was much outside of it, so I didn't have anything to compare it to. But um, Probably yeah, similar to okay. southeastern Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I'm I sure. Mean, <laughs> yeah. Probably very similar. I mean, and there's always those, like you know, conservative beliefs. It's really tricky to feel comfortable being gay, et cetera. Right. So did you come out when you were living in Iowa? Um, when I was in college, Okay, yes. and now I, you went to school in Northern Iowa, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I made sure I was not living at home. I did not want to be <laughs> my own dad. So yeah, it was, I came out January 1st of, I think it was 2017 or 2018. Okay. Um, Cause I had, I was like, I'm going to come out. I'm going to go home for the holidays. It was like Christmas break during the winter. And I was like, I'm going to tell my family I'm gay. And that was going to be it. And I was so prepared. And I drove home and did not tell my family I was gay. I got way too scared. (laughs) I was like, I'm not about to ruin Christmas. Um, So then on my drive back on New Year's Day back to college, I called them. Okay. I "Okay, I have to tell you something. How did they react? Um, They were cool. So I actually told my sister first because I knew she was going to be cool about it. Um... And she was like, okay, tell mom and dad. And I was just uttering the words for the first time. is just so terrifying. So I was like, I literally can't. Like, uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to actually, like, tell them that I'm gay. So I asked her to tell them. And she was on her way to their house, actually. So she went inside and told them. And then they called me. And they were cool about it. Like, we just had a discussion. My dad said he... I don't remember. One of them knew. Like, one of them, they were like, we've always known. And the other one was apparently surprised. But I was like, Mom, I used to take your old purses and hold them in my closet and, like, stuff. How are you surprised? But, um, no, they were cool with it. Love. And speaking of your dad, you and him connected over Adele, right? Yeah, yeah. He was, like, the main one. My dad 
for like I admire him so much because he loves like a strong female vocalist. As like, he should. I feel like a lot of straight <laughs> people struggle with it. Like, I know. They struggle with the Beyonce and Adele, Ariana Grande. Like they yeah. cannot they handle can't. the power of a, of a good vocal run. Yeah, and my dad's like a farmer. He like owns pigs and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fact that he loves it. But yeah, he was the one that I remember. He was like, "This girl's so good." Blah blah blah. Because I used to love Carrie Underwood. Okay. She was kind of my Adele before I discovered Adele. Like I was a huge Carrie Underwood fan. Um, and that's also a vocalist. And he, I remember him being like, if you like Carrie, like look into this girl. So tell us what is like your fandom for Adele? How does that grow in like your teenage years? Yeah, that's a good question actually. Um, I mean, I just like stayed a fan of hers, but I never wanted to like, you can't f stan a girl and be straight. You know? <laughs> so I was like, I can't like, so part of me was like, just trying to be like, oh yeah, she's cool and like play it off and stuff. I would go home and just stream her. But um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I was, it was like a closeted, along with being gay, a closeted like hardcore Dell stan. But um, I would like show my love to her. And then when I went to college, obviously when I came out, that was kind of around the time she dropped 25. Okay. And so then I was like, okay, screw it. Like, I'm <laughs> just going to stay on this girl. So is that when you like started being active online and you're supportive yes. of her? Yes. Yeah. I was going to say that's like the first two albums I was pretty in the closet about, but during 25, that's when I was like, okay, I'm going public. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I love that. So after college, you moved to Chicago, right? What was it like making that transition from, <laughs> from Iowa to Chicago? It was fun. It was great. I mean, I couldn't have moved at a more chaotic time it was right when COVID hit like trump was being trump at that time like everything was just like haywire so it was chaotic but like i loved it and it was the best decision i've ever made in my life like that first year specifically being in chicago like i will always hold so close to me it was the best year yeah as i mentioned earlier me and you had spoken months and months ago about coming on the pod yes. but things got a little busy in your yeah. life <laughs> since that conversation that I think are really interesting to talk about today. So, one, you went and saw Adele for Christmas Eve. Yes, in Vegas. And somehow you ended up in her, like, VIP box. Yeah. yeah. So she, tell us a little bit about how that all unfolded. So, yeah, I got tickets to see her um, on Christmas Eve. I was When I found out she was going to Vegas, I was like, I'm going to Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so me and two of my friends got um, tickets and leading up to it, there was a huge winter storm coming and two of my friends weren't able to make it to Vegas because their flights got canceled. My mm -hmm. flight was a little earlier, so I um, made it, thank God. So I was just in Vegas in the day before the show, so the 23rd, or maybe it was two days before the show, um, she DM'd me. I was in line just getting dinner and I was just like checking Instagram as one does. And I just saw a DM from Adele and I was like, wait a minute, what is this? And yeah, she essentially just said that she had heard that I was coming for Christmas Eve and that she wanted to like upgrade my friends and I seats to her box section. And I was like, oh, my friends can't come. <laughs> I was like, it'll just be me. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, and she was so sweet. She refunded my friends and I for all of the money that we spent. Like they got all their ticket money back and everything. And um, I met her assistant and yeah, it was just the coolest situation. And then during the show, she came up and gave me a hug during When We Were Young, which is my favorite Adele song. Were you in contact with her before the concert? She sent me a DM previously. Like the very, the start of all of it was in like 2020. She sent me a DM on Instagram and said that she had been watching my Twitter and she just like knew I was a fan because that's literally all I tweet about. But, um, <laughs> and she was just like, oh, like I just see that you're a fan, like just sending you love and stuff and it was super sweet so that was the first thing and then later down the line when she was releasing the music video for i drink wine her team this like adele access twitter account sent me a dm on twitter and they invited me to la to the music video premiere and so that's when i got like a picture with her and she and i sat and talked so we had like talked a few times mm, before so the okay. dm was like obviously just insane but yeah, that wasn't like our first. It wasn't like piece shocking. Of like you no. never yeah, spoke like, to oh, Adele again. <laughs> <laughs> was that Vegas show your first time seeing Adele live? Yeah, it's the it, this Vegas residency she's doing is the only the second time she's ever toured in the United States. What was it like? How did you feel? Amazing, but like things like that, I want to see twice. And she's doing a second leg, thankfully, so hopefully I can go back again. But 
because the first time I'm just so excited and I'm just like trying to like keep my cool and just absorb it all but I just like black out the whole time like, I don't know <laughs> I don't remember half the song she sang because I was just like she's right there um so yeah but it was super cool do you even like remember Adele coming up to you and giving you a hug or did you, did you black it out I blacked it out but thankfully there's enough pictures and stuff that I'm like I, I remember it happened, but I don't remember. Like, I do not remember leaning over and giving her a hug. So I was just like, what is going on? But I remember realizing when she was going to, like, I saw her trajectory when she was walking through the audience. I was like, she's going to come up to me right now. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's so cool. So beyond that, so that was in December, Christmas Eve. And then the Grammys roll around yeah. in mid-February. And yeah. if anybody that's listening to this was on gay Twitter on that day, <laughs> nobody knew that you were going to be at the Grammys. You hadn't like well, announced it, really. I hadn't announced it because I had to sign an NDA. I don't know if I can say this, but... I had to sign an NDA, but I told everybody. <laughs> Anyone that would listen in real life. I was scared to post it online because yeah. I was like, they're watching. But everyone, all my friends can attest. I was, there was no secret. I was like, I'm so excited. I was telling my doorman, my haircut oh, person. No. I was like, yeah, but no, yeah. People didn't know. People were pretty surprised, but it took everything in me not to tweet. Like, you guys are going to the Grammys. For those who didn't see the Grammys, you kind of participated in this, you could call it like a stand Twitter table of yeah. people that like stand all the different artists that were up for album of the year, right? Yes, yeah. And you each kind of like shared your story and then why you think they should win mm -hmm. and kind of like had a debate. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the ceremony, they brought you all up to the stage to announce the album of the year winner. Which we did not know was gonna happen. That was yeah. crazy. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get more to that in a okay, second. Okay. But tell us a little bit about how this whole opportunity came to be. Like, when did they reach out? How did this happen? One thing I'm gonna say about all of this, people in LA do not give you enough time because the when she flew me out to LA the first time, they sent us all DMs like four days before they wanted us to fly to LA. And this Grammy situation, it was six days before we had to fly there the first time. I'm like, you guys need to give us a little more time. But yeah, it was just right before. It was like the week of, so there, we went there Grammy weekend, obviously. The weekend before we went to film. Okay. Um, and do the, all the other things that we had to do. But yeah, um, yeah so like f five or six days before that is when um, they reached so out. So did they just email you or like, hey, like come to the Grammys or did you know it was the Grammys? Yeah, or? no, did not know it was the Grammys. So I just got a random email one day from this lady and she, the subject line just said Adele TV opportunity. She was just like, hey, my name's so-and-so. Um, we have an opportunity coming up that I think you'd be like the perfect fit for please let me know if you want to get on the phone and like talk more about it. And that's all it said. And I was like, what? But I emailed her back. I was like, sure. <laughs> Instead of Dell. So I was like, I'm down. We got on a Zoom call and she was just like, hi, my name's whatever. And I'm just going to ask you some questions and then I'll give you a little more information at the end. So I was like, okay. It was like, this was like a Thursday, I think, or something in the middle of the day. It was so random. But she just like asked me, questions about Adele, like my love for Adele, when it started, kind of like what you're asking me. Then at the end, she was like, well, this thing that I want you to do, you would fly here these dates, we would fly you here, you would stay, then we'd fly you back these dates, like, does that work for you? And I was like, what is going on? But I was like, sure. I, I got off the phone and I made some calls to like my parents. I was like, do I do this? Am I about to die? But um. Yeah, so I just called her back and I was like, yeah. And she was like, okay, well, it's the Grammys. Yep. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and so essentially, I guess what happened was the Grammys were, like you said, wanting to do this thing where they bring a fan for each person. And they were wanting to be like real people. Like they didn't want to bring like, like their team or like influencers or anything. They were just trying to find like random people on Twitter and stuff. So they reached out to the artists and they were like, hey, can we do this essentially? Like, is this okay or whatever? And um, they were gonna find the people, but apparently when they reached out to Adele's team, Adele's team just told them like, no, don't look for anyone, just like contact Colin, I guess. Wow. Oh, that's what she told me. That's impressive. Yeah, I was like, they wait, know you. Minute. And they give her my email and stuff. I was like, this is crazy. So you fly to LA the weekend before the Grammys yes. to film these segments. Mm -hmm. What is that experience like? It was my first time like filming anything. So I didn't really know what to expect, but they gave us a rundown of like what the day was gonna entail. 
and we were in some big warehouse, some studio. There was just a million people around. That also surprised me, just how many people go into things like this. Like, there's just so many people doing the most random stuff was, that floored me. But, um, yeah, we just did, like, a mock little thing where they just ran through. They gave us pointers. We went in there, and it was just, like, a table. Obviously, like, what was aired is this table, and we sat around, and everyone just kind of like said their two cents. You would just like go down the line. And so-and-so was like, I think Beyonce should win album of the year for this reason. I think Kendrick should win. And we had to go for a while. Like each person was supposed to talk a lot and like say everything that they could possibly say. And they would give us little pointers and stuff. Um, but yeah, that was the like filming portion of it. So how do you feel about how your segment appeared on the Grammys? I was fine with it. Twitter was not. <laughs> people, people were so mad at me because I went right after the Lizzo girl. Uh-huh. And she she like said her two cents about wanting Lizzo to win. Um, and I remember the last thing that she said was Lizzo just like opens TikTok and like dances and it goes viral. And so my first thing was, well, Adele doesn't have to dance to go viral on TikTok. <laughs> but what I said was Adele doesn't have to dance to go viral on TikTok. All she does, all she has to do is sing, which I feel like is a little better, you know. But they cut That's that like a last compliment. little part, right? But people thought I was shading Lizzo. Well, so. you got the bad edit. Mm. They gave me the Come bad edit. I'm the villain. I was the villain of the <laughs> Grammy stand. <laughs> You're there for that filming weekend. You go home, have your little work week, and yeah, then just try and be normal. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> shaking the whole so, week. For the, the Grammys, like, how do you come up with what you want to wear? Like, what's your preparation process? Oh my gosh, that was stressful. And also, I don't have a tux, and trying to get a tux in that short amount of time was so... Because they told us, like, you need to wear a tux. They were like, wear a dresses, tuxes, whatever. And I was like, how do I get a tux fitted in, like, 11 days? But I somehow did, but yeah. Get your fit all ready to go, and then you head to L.A., Yes. It's Grammy's weekend. Yes. What's it like? Tell us tell us it from start to finish. It was night of. We all got there. We went out to like dinner and drinks and just hung out. But I was like, I need to be in bed by like eight. I was like, I got to look good for the Grammys tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> you put a face mask on. I always thought as a viewer of the Grammys, it's like they're at like eight o'clock at night for the Midwest. So I was thinking I had all day the next day. But we had to be ready and out of the hotel by like noon. The bus came to pick us up at noon. So... It was like an early day, but it came and picked us up. We were supposed to walk the red carpet, but um, but our bus driver, as we were driving there, missed at least one turn. I think two turns in the traffic was just insane. So we missed the red carpet. So you end up arriving. What happens from there? We like went through this like back area where all the people on the floor come in at, and there's like booklets and just like little memorabilia and there's a bar and stuff and then they took us to our seats and our seats were on the floor we were like we were all in a line going down like this facing where all the celebrities were sitting um which was super cool and the stage was just like right here but yeah we just like sat there we had chaperones the whole time i don't think they trusted us they were like these crazy things um, if people that weren't watching the grammys it was kind of like you guys were like against like the bottom like the lower bowl section like yeah. of the arena yeah. like you guys were against that wall like yeah. on the floor right and then mm-hmm. all the celebrities are right in front of you at little tables yeah they all had tables so you were just looking stuff. out at them and you yeah. can't take pictures we could only have our phones out on commercial breaks Okay. And even then they were like no pictures of the talent and a lot of our chaperones would stand like right in front of where we were all so that we like actually couldn't take a picture of any of the celebrities. Um, but yeah. They didn't want that on Pop Crave. They were like, yeah. no. I was like, I need to get a picture of Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> so was she like near you? Like was she visible like, in, from where you were sitting? Adele? Uh, Taylor Swift. Oh, Taylor Swift, yeah. yes. Taylor Swift was very close. She was like, one of the closest people to where I was sitting. So right in front of us, we had these just little tables that had like snacks and stuff. And then it was a walkway. And then that's where the table started. And her her table was like the first table right there. She and Jackie Antonoff. Did you get to talk to her at all or? No, I didn't get to talk to Taylor Swift, unfortunately. She did, I think she said hi to some of the people. I wasn't one of them, but she walked by at one point and I think she said hi to some of the people that were like down further. It was just wild being around that many A-list celebrities. The whole night was crazy, but Beyonce was crazy. Like meeting Beyonce was crazy. She had just won an award, I'm pretty sure. Or she was on, yeah, she was on the stage or something for something and she walked off and went 
I assume, to change because she came back in a different dress. Um, and when she walked by us, that was the closest she had gotten to any of us the whole night. And we were all just like frozen. And that was right at the start of the commercial breaks. And then she walks by us. We're all just kind of like hanging out. And it was me and two of the other fans. One of them was the Beyonce fan. And then we were all just, we were staying there small talking about something. And I look over and Beyonce's starting to walk back and she's like coming down our way. And I was like, oh my God. And so I grabbed the Beyonce fan. And I was like, Beyonce's coming, Beyonce's coming. And she just immediately started freaking out. So as Beyonce walked by, I don't remember if she like walked by and she may have like said hi to us right away, but she like started to walk by and Alicia like, yelled her name and like reached out to her and Beyonce turned around and she signaled somehow to be like, I'm the fan or something like somehow like got her attention as like, um, alluding to that. She's the fan. And then Beyonce like turned around fully and sat there and she was like, Oh, hi. And Alicia, they had an interaction at one point. I think Beyonce mailed her merch and then Beyonce turned to Joey, the Coldplay fan and I, and she was like, Oh, are you guys fans too? And I just like nodded my head. I was just like trying to breathe. And um, <laughs> she asked who we were fans of. And I was just like, Adele. And that's the only <laughs> word I said to be honest. <laughs> that's like the only word I said was Adele. And she was just like, she was so nice. And she was just like, oh, I hope you guys have a good night. And then she just like walked away. Her bodyguards were pretty, they were like trying to get her moving. But did you get to see Adele at all? That night. I got to see Adele, yes. She was kind of far from where I was. I was always kind of back to her right shoulder, so she never really like saw me down there and like we never talked or anything. But um when I went up on stage later in the night when they were announcing album of the year, she like saw me at first and we like smiled and then they put us all on the line and then she blew me a kiss. Oh cute. Wait, so did you know you were going up to the, to the stage? No. For that? No. I was freaking out. So at one point during the commercial break leading up to that, a few of the fans had left and we were confused why. And they, someone told us, oh, they just went to the restroom. But someone else was like, no, they didn't go to the restroom. Like someone said they were doing something. And so there, I think it was like three of them. And so we were like, what is going on? They, they were plotting something we could tell. Like we just cut from commercial break. And so I'm just like adjusting myself. And he was just like, fans, like come up here. And I was like, no, wait, what? <laughs> And I don't remember standing up or walking up on the stage at all. I'm so happy I didn't trip up the stairs. I don't remember it in the slightest. Um, but yeah, and then we were just on stage. I was wanting Beyonce to win album of yeah. the year, personally. Why would you say that right in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> well, personally, it was, my view was either like a Dell or Beyonce. Like right. I was not I, I was think, not going for Harry Styles. No yeah. offense to the Harry Nators, whatever your yeah. whatever your fandom name is. The Stylers. <laughs> Stylers, yeah. yeah. I remember like was waiting so I was like okay I want to see like is Beyonce gonna win this right. and it comes back from commercial I'm like doing other things like cleaning my room and I look up and I'm like is that Colin like on the TV <laughs> like on the stage like behind Trevor Noah behind Trevor I was like Trevor move <laughs> <laughs> this is my moment <laughs> do you remember anything from being up there just Adele like acknowledging me that's it I mean we were standing there for a little bit because he pulled us up there and then they had to they cut and like named all the nominees, which like cut to little videos and stuff of them. So we were staying there for a little bit and like, I just remember we were all like, what is going on? I was kind of confused because us announcing the winner didn't come to mind at first. I just assumed maybe we would just be up there and like if Adele won, she would just like give me a hug. <laughs> no, I didn't think of it. And so then when, yeah, they- When did you realize and, that the person, that the a fan would be announcing it? When it was being announced. No. <laughs> what has life been like post Grammys? So you're on the Grammys, the general public doesn't know, your followers don't know, your close friends knew you were gonna be there, but everyone's like, oh my gosh, like yeah. Colin, you were at the fucking Grammys. Like when you're coming back home and you're going out to Boys Town, like are people recognizing you? Like what's it like? They are, and I think it's so weird. <laughs> I think it's so weird. I mean, it's like sweet. Everyone meet, like has great intentions, obviously, but it's just so weird, like being recognized. But yeah, I'll just be out at a bar. I remember Reed was so mad <laughs> because it was, it was, no, it wasn't even right after the Grammys. It was like months after the Grammys. Someone came up to me and was like, oh my gosh, I remember you from the Grammys. And I'm just like, I feel like if I were watching the Grammys and saw a random gay man talking about some <laughs> pop star. I would not, and then I saw them out at the bar. I don't even think it would register. Like, maybe that's just my Maybe memory, she followed you already. Maybe she already knew who you were. Maybe, yeah. Can I say something? I don't 
I'm not mad. I was. Wait, come over here. Come over here. Come over here and say it into the mic. I said. <laughs> what happened was they said, "Are you the Adele game?" And before Colin could answer, I swooped in and was, and of course made it about me and was like, <laughs> "Yes, this is my friend Colin, my best friend Colin." And uh, yeah, just you know, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were like his manager yeah. in that yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were like the like the talent. You the were helping helping like, support him. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Show me your tickets. $10 Venmo, here's the QR code. Well, Colin, thank you so much for being here today. This has been so much fun. Do you want to give everyone your socials so they can check you out? Yeah, it's at Colin Elliott on Twitter um, and at Colin.Elliott on Instagram. And you guys can follow us on Instagram at UnpackTHT and on TikTok at UnpackThatPod. And we'll see you guys here every other Thursday. Bye, everyone.